A cyst a cavity occurring in hard or soft tissue with liquid, semiliquid or air content, it is surrounded by adiphanite connective tissue wall or capsule and usually has an epithelial lining. Classification The cysts classify into congenital cyst and developmental cyst. The developmental cyst subdivided into Nondental cyst and dental origin cyst Congenital cyst like thyroglossal cyst, dermoidal cyst, branchiogenic cyst, developmental nondental cysts like median cyst, incisive canal cyst, globulomaxillary cyst, mucosal, ranula, developmental dental odontogenic cysts, periodontal cyst, dentigerous cyst, keratocyst, primordial cysts. Thyroglossal cyst. It is a rise from thyroglossal duct. It is may be asymptomatic or may cause symptoms as a result of pressure on other structures swallowing will cause mass move upward. Dermoid cysts. Dermoid cysts are relatively uncommon in oral cavity. The cyst consists of a fibrous wall lined with stratified squamous epithelium which contains hair, sebaceous and sweat glands as well as tooth structures. They may occur on the hard and soft palate, on the dorsum of the tongue or more commonly in the floor of the mouth above or below the geniohyoid muscle usually in the midline. Branchiogenic cysts. These cysts arise from defects in second bronchial cleft they are located along the anterior border of the stomacholidomastoid muscle. Developmental nondental cysts, such as median cysts. It is bone cysts that forms in a median fissure of the palate from embryonic remnants. Incisive canal or nosopalatine cysts, which located in the center of the bone but do not expand inside the bone nor do they alter significantly the overlying mucosa, these cysts give no clinical symptoms unless they become secondarily infected. Globulomaxillary cyst. Globulomaxillary cysts are epithelial lined sacs formed at the junction of the globular and maxillary processes between the lateral incisor and canine teeth. They usually cause a divergence of the roots of these teeth and appears as a pear-shaped radiolucencios on X-ray film. Mucosales Result from obstruction of a glandular duct or minor salivary gland duct and are commonly located in the lip, cheek and floor of the mouth. They may also be found on the anterior portion of the tongue. A ranula. A ranula is a cyst forming in the floor of the mouth, generally from sublingual gland. The ranula forms in a manner similar to the mucosal but double up to a much larger size. It is non-painful iegens, but the tongue may be raised and its motion obstructed, thus impairing mastication and speech. Developmental dental cysts or odontogenic cysts, such as Periodontal cysts, which formed from epithelial rests or remnants in the periodontal membrane. The usual location is along the lateral surface of the teeth, which termed lateral cyst, or at the apex of the tooth, which then termed radicular cysts. Cysts of inflammatory nature in edentulus area are termed residual. These result from incomplete surgical removal of pathological tissue at the time an infected tooth is extracted. Primordinal cysts. It is developed when the retrogression of the stellate reticulin in the enamel organ. Dentigerous cysts. These cysts develop after deposition of enamel and are probable, result of degenerative changes in the reduced enamel forming epithelium. A dentigerous cyst contain a crown of unerupted tooth. Keratocysts. Many follicular and dentigerous cysts contain keratinizing material and are known as keratocysts. 
Keratocysts increase in size principally by a process of epithelial cell multiplication and have a greater tendency to recurrence. Treatment. All these cysts are treated either by enucleation which means excision or removal of the cyst. Or by marsupialization which means uncovered or deroofed the cyst. Finally, there is another classification of cysts is. World Health Organization. WHO Classification.